guys today we are going to be doing as i adjust this another part of more garberg versus the world and i'm actually going to be just giving commentary here while um, rolling in the footage, the use footage between these two. Now in this one, bringing back this series, I thought it was right to start off this series with a pretty legendary in and of itself uh, bushcrafting blade, and this is the Battle Horse Knives Battle Ore. So this is going to be the Mora Garberg versus the Battle Ore. And as always guys, before we get into this, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more awesome Alaskan content like that. So guys, this was actually a pretty interesting test and uh, as we're going to roll out this footage I have to say that I think the battle lore is a really really great knife and personally for me ever since I got it back in this last July uh, I've been carrying this thing pretty much every time I go bushcrafting unless I want to test out a particular knife this has really been my go-to knife and including now into the winter and so this I thought it was a pretty good pairing to bat or to put up my battle lore versus the Mora Garberg just to kind of see what my personal favorite how it stacks up and how it compares to the awesome and really amazing Garberg and so that's basically what this video was all about or that's what it's all about and you guys can see what I started off doing uh, or was the first thing I started doing was um, just general uh, tasks of different notches and so I did the first to start off with both of them I did a actual break so with smaller saplings and stuff you can break them or pretty much cut and break them where you need them to break by cutting around that area kind of damaging the outer layer of the sapling and then just snapping it like a twig and so that that went really well for both of them. For both of them, I will note that I had to use a frozen green tree. So in case you're wondering why I had to put undercuts on both of those um, saplings that I did break off and stuff, that's because the sap was actually frozen in there. And so it was a little bit harder than it would have been if I had done this test in the summer. So just a quick note on that. It wasn't necessarily a lack of performance on either's behalf. They both did just fine with that. So the next test was of course kind of skinning, peeling it, and then moving on to the notch work. Um, they did both really well. I will say I have to hand it to the battle lore because the battle lore I think what ultimately gets the Garber and actually a lot of Moras in trouble is with the Mora setup and how they do their Scandi grinds. They not only put a micro bevel on their edges but their Scandi grinds and the reason why they really have to put a micro bevel on their grinds is because they they don't really do their Scandi grinds brought back. Like if you guys notice on this one where the grind starts for the Scandinavian grind, it's further than in this. Let me pull it out. Garberg. So you can see how the Garberg, it's larger than most normal and I'll kind of clean it up. It's a little messy right now. but. Um, with this Garberg you can see just how much smaller comparatively and these knives by the way actually the Garberg is slightly thicker than the Battle Lord just so you guys know but they're very they're almost identical in thickness but you guys can see where the grind starts on this Battle Lore is it's not gigantically different but when we talk blades and um, rather grinds of blades every millimeter counts and so when you have a longer grind it just makes sense because if we think of the scandy it's just a wedge it's just a straight wedge so when you have a thicker wedge like this it's harder to push through materials as when you have a smaller wedge like this and so that's basically what you see and this thing is quite the monster when it comes to making and doing different gr or different uh, notches so it did really well and I definitely give the hand to the battle lore because it did that for well and another uh, in the same vein the handle and overall ergonomics lend it their hand to the battle lore very well and so I think uh, not anything against the Mora because the Garberg does have good um, ergonomics but overall the battle lore has just a little bit better just a little bit more refined just better ergonomics overall and you can kind of expect that because this knife is about twice the price if not a little bit more than the Garberg 
So that was the primary test here. I like to test. Uh, <clears throat> I like to test doing that kind of just run of the mill skinning, kind of snapping off the twigs because that's generally a lot of what bushcrafting is comprised of, making notches and different things like that. That's a very practical, real world thing. So moving over to the next thing I did and I tested was uh, fire starting because fire starting is also the next big thing that most bushcrafters do with their knives and I did not roll in any um what is it any feather sticking for the Garberg because it does a great job at feather sticking and if you guys don't know you can go watch some of the Mora versus the world uh, other ones that I have in the past and you guys can see kind of get a reference of how well it does feather sticking so I just did the feather sticking with this one this one does really good at feather sticking in fairness I will say because I've been doing a lot of EDC content here of late I'm a little out of practice when it comes to feather sticking but for the most part um, from my experience and even just from today Day. this thing does a very good job the battle lord does a very good job at feather sticking <clears throat> i have very little complaints about batoning and i know i used a smaller piece to baton but uh it does a great job at batoning and feather sticking it, it has it under lock now what really did surprise me because battle or not battle lord but uh battle horse knives they actually do sharpen their spines from factory and so i was expecting the ferro rod performance to be a bit better but in all honesty, it, it was a little bit underwhelming. You guys could see it through really good sparks, but I had, I was using real world because what I like to do out here when I do my test, you guys can see forest behind me, I like to do real world tests. And so what I did was I just went back there, my back over like that way, and just grabbed a handful of birch bark, you guys can see in this test. And I just started throwing ferro rod sparks on it with both of these knives. And I tried and I tried and I tried. I'm not going to roll in all the footage from this one of how hard I tried, but I tried really hard and I got that ferro rod down in there. I was blasting sparks right on it and it was throwing good sparks, but the sparks just weren't enough and they weren't hot enough. And so this one it can definitely do that kind of where you throw sparks onto stuff and it catches fire. I think I've shown that before with birch bark uh, with some of the tests I've done with this knife. But in all honesty, it's it's always been a little bit underwhelming. And in this test, it kind of show you got, shows you guys side by side that this knife, it, while it's good, it's not quite good enough. If you have dried out or dedicated tinder materials that you have processed, this will definitely light them up with the back of the spine, no problem. Problem. But if you come back out here into the real world and you just start grabbing birch bark off a tree and start to strike it with this knife, you will have to process the birch bark a little bit. It's just been what I found with this knife. But as you guys can see, I came in with the Garberg and with the same exact ferro rod, just took this knife <coughs> and started doing the same thing that I was doing with the battle lore and it threw more sparks, hotter sparks, and it worked significantly better. And you guys could see that I actually got a fire out of this one twice. The first one, because once again, this is damp birch bark, the first one kind of pittered out and just didn't catch off. But the second time I got a flame with this one, it caught and it went and it was great. But every single time this one was throwing more and hotter sparks than this one was. And so continually the Garber really impresses me with its ability to strike the ferro rod or all the ferro rods I've ever put up against it. And uh, it, it does it well. I will say Garber, not Garber, Mora, you guys did an excellent job with designing this um, spine on this thing it is a really great spine for throwing ferro rod sparks and so that really actually surprised and kind of impressed me with this garberg i was actually expecting this one to win pretty hands out and uh, really do quite well but it actually didn't so it was a little surprising but anyways kind of in conclusion and summing this video up these two are very equal knives and overall it's kind of a trade-off thing i will still continue to can carry this battle lore and overall i like the battle lore more because some people may argue it doesn't have as 
as capable fire starting abilities but overall the knife has better ergonomics and a better grind that lend it to doing more crafty or not objects but crafty tasks than the Garberg. Now the Garberg make no mistake is a superb and excellent knife especially for survival and even bushcraft it does it so well and it's a very what I like to call bush competent tool and overall there's no complaints but ultimately my personal winner and the one that I'm going to be carrying at the end of this video is still the battle lore because I enjoy its superior ergonomics. It also has a superior blade steel being 01 tool steel so this makes its edge go longer. This one has had to have been sharpened because this is a serious work knife. We put a, Ashley and I put a lot of use through the Garberg because we love it so much but uh, it's already had to been sharpened. This 01 tool steel it gets used just about as much as this one in all the same tasks of processing and dressing game animals and just different bushcraft general duty tasks and it's already had to been sharpened once so you know take that for what you will and the 14C28N that this steel uses or this knife uses for steel is not a bad steel at all it's just a lower quality steel because obviously it's a cheaper knife and in addition once again the ergonomics aren't squared away as well uh, the handle it's a great handle but it's a little bit hard especially when it gets wet to have a firm grip on so for those reasons I still give it to the battle lore and I don't necessarily want anyone thinking that this whole series is just rigged to make the Garberg look good. Once again, as I think I've said before, I'm not sponsored by Garberg. I'm not sp sponsored by Mora to promote this knife or sell these knives. I get nothing in return for this. I just thought that this would be a really fun series to do because immediately when I got the Garberg, it was such a superior, excellent knife that I'm like, hey, this thing, it has a lot of serious potential to it. Let's just play with it, test it against other knives because we all like seeing that anyways guys that's been my test hopefully you guys have enjoyed this pit against the battle lore the more garberg versus the battle lore uh they're, they're both really excellent knives i would say like i said i still like the battle lore a little bit more and it's a little bit more capable when it comes to crafting but <clears throat> either or really excellent still the winner is the battle lore anyways guys hopefully you've enjoyed this video and as always god bless and i'm out